Hello and welcome to the most anticipated video of 2023. Check out the notes for today. As you probably have guessed it. Today we are going to be scraping some reeds. Finally. So welcome. Welcome back. Welcome to my reed masking desk. Today I'm going to make one reed with you. First we'll go over the basics. We'll go over the theory of things so that you know what's going on. And after this video, you'll be making the best reads in the world, hopefully. Actually, that's that's my sincere desire. But also, I hope you, re you realize that there is no way in one video I can cover everything that could be said. Generally, I think scraping and learning how to scrape should be integrated in your weekly oval lessons. A little bit about my journey with the scraping and the reeds. I started when I was 15. I was very lucky that I had a fantastic teacher who started working with me on this, on, on how to scrape. He was supplying me with really good cane, which was very helpful because with a good cane, even if you make some mistakes, it still works. And so every week I would bring him some reeds and he would correct and explain to me where was the mistake, what I need to do, and then he would scrape them in front of me and show me my mistakes. And this was, uh, it was great. I got so motivated that in a few weeks I started playing on my own reads. And that's, it really shows that the right approach and uh, the right fundamentals of how to do it, this is very important. So enough about that, let's jump right into it. Allow me to introduce you to the tools that we're going to be using for the scraping of the reed. Starting with the knife, actually, general tip on the knives, they should be really sharp, except if you're a beginner. If you're a beginner, maybe it's okay to practice on with knives that are not so sharp, because if it's too sharp, then it gets too wild and you make more mistakes. That's at least what, I, what happened to me. But for any experienced reed maker, sharp knives are a must. Starting with my first knife, this one is a um, double hollow knife, I think it's the name. Uh, I use it for most of the work. I have another knife, which is my absolute favorite one. The Nagamatsu, Japanese steel, fantastic knife. You don't have to sharpen it too often, but if you do, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. When I was uh, in Vancouver, I was very happy to find a Japanese gentleman specialist who had a shop for um, Japanese knives uh, for sushi chefs and he was able to sharpen this to perfection. Normally the best would be to send it because uh, really a Japanese skilled person can sharpen that the best. Moving on, I used the mandro to keep stability. I always use it because you have more stability, you will see. Uh, then I have a wooden plaque, which is uh, thick, a little bit thick, so uh, there is a good contact with the reed. I have a reed cutter, which is very good. I normally, it's set to the, the desired length, so all my reeds are the same, same length. Uh, and then I cut once, and normally I don't have to cut anymore. And then micrometer, very important, so we can measure and the thickness of the reed, especially in the beginning, this was really what was super helpful because if you're not experienced, you might not realize that your the tip of the reed is too thick, still too thick. That was often a mistake or that you took, took too much from the middle. And this is what's going to help measure. I have my very first one here that has a very practical line here in the beginning so this one gives me always a very stable reading of the of the tip of the reed which is uh, I would say the most important to start measuring and after that everything and, and the middle we'll get to that and of course we're gonna need a reed I have prepared here and uh, water to soak it in or or vodka I'm just kidding Let's soak it in for a few minutes and then get 
some other theory out of the way. I have these graphs here. As our read is soaking, let's have a quick look at the theory of things and uh, remind ourselves of the whole, the whole situation, what's going on, don't worry. It looks complicated, it's, it's not. It, it is really easy. We start with the read. It's very important to have everything organized. We're starting with the whole measurements. We have the read, we have the whole total length of 71, which is, that's my length. It could be also 71.5, uh, around there. If you're using tube that is 47, then that total length would be 72. So I, I am calculating um, with this, the 46 tube. That's the total length. The most important he thing here is to have that wooden part of the reed when you cut it to be around 25, 25 and a half total length of the wooden part which starts from the end of the tube and going up to the end. The scrape itself, I've written 10, it could be 10 is the base, 10.5 up to 11. This is good. One thing, very important thing that it's, it's worth mentioning. When you have the gouge cane, that's the gouge cane. The principle, what is the principle? Is that the cane, the hardest part of the cane is where the bark is. And that's the hardest. The furthest you go, the softer it gets. This is important to remember and to understand because uh, in my opinion, having a good gouge and having a, a very good ratio between the middle and the sides will help you with that so you don't have to be digging too much when you're scra scraping because when you're digging and digging and digging you're going into a softer and softer part of the cane and that's that's not good if we keep most most of the harder cane the principle there is that's why i gouge slightly thinner 56 57 and my sides are also not very thick and with that that's also kind of a personal thing, personal preference, but I'm also explaining the, the theory behind it. Here, I try to draw the different openings of a reed and different, what different gouges would give us as a result. Later, we will see that on the reeds. If you have two thick sides, uh, it will be very, it will be open and also will be not closing that well. If you have very thin sides, the sides will be closing and then you would almost have a feeling that the reed is heavy, but actually not enough air is going through. And that would be the ideal when the corners are gradually closing. Now we're going to the scrape. And after that, I will, I will talk a little bit about these guys here. The scrape, I wrote the most, dif uh, the most important measurements, I feel, of, of the scrape. We have the scrape, which is 10 to 11, um, and that's with the gouge 57. It's just an example. Micrometer is crucial. Uh, starting from the tip, I feel like that's the center of the tip should be a little bit thicker. And then the corners are 10. That's a... Uh, that's where we are, where I am aiming. Of course, depending on the read, maybe you go more. This is the heart, so-called around here, 32, 35. The center, this is very a crucial point. The center of the read, which is at the fifth millimeter, or you just look where the center is, is very important. And I think this is a, always crucial to check where it is. It could go down to 45. My reads are around 46, 47 from when I measure them. Going very down here, if your gouge is like 57, the difference between here and where you start the scrape should not be too big. And that's also a, a personal opinion. If it's more defined, it could be more defined here, but here, more gradual going down to the scrape. 
I find this is better. If you want to have it more defined, I think here is more helpful. Or if you want in general more, de more definition, do it later on, not at the very beginning. We'll do that just in a minute. Uh, then, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, the scrape, why is it like that? This is, okay, let's talk a little bit, a little bit about the different shapes of the, of the scrape itself. This is a more deeper U scrape. This is the U scrape and this is the W scrape. What I do sometimes, uh, especially with my uh, M2 oboe, with that it lacks a little bit of lower vibrations. So after having had the U scrape, sometimes if the cane is hard and it's still not releasing these lower vibrations, I do additionally make a W and this then the reeds are becoming more comfortable and I have a little bit of longer vibrations. What do I mean by shorter and longer vibrations? The shorter vibrations, they start from, from the tip, for example, if you don't have anything scraped, but the tip you would have only the reed vibrating from here to here. And then as you scrape more, they will go longer and longer. Uh, the best is to have the balance between all kinds of vibrations but lower vibration is because then if you are releasing here if you're scraping here you'd have you would have a vibration that was going on until here and then you're releasing a little bit more so it goes a little bit longer and you can feel that the problem is if you if you want to have if you have too much lower then you're losing the stability and that's the problem if you start digging down here it will get out of control and you would get very low vibrations but it's not not going to be stable anymore that's why i recommend the part of the reed that i call the back here to be scraped at a later point i find that it does matter when you take that if you start the reed in the beginning and you start scraping here a lot and if you take a lot Immediately, I find that you're setting the tone for that read to be unstable and to be failing. This is very interesting about the timing uh, of when, what to do. And one last thing before we, we start scraping is that, in my opinion, like I just said, I always start from scraping. I, I forgot to mention the different kind of tips. And so that's more of the triangle kind of. and this is the kind of a tip that you have the corners that are not going very down and this is this is pretty much what I like to do something like this between this and this let's get back to the point of the order of how you should scrape and then I have here you can see once I failed here um, we'll come back to this one the order of scraping if this is if you see the read from the profile It's almost, imagine this being a building. And this is the foundation. And we are trying to achieve that. This is the foundation that holds the whole reed here. And that's the, that's where it continues and goes down. Yeah, I hope you, you can understand what I mean. This is the tip. And then you have the other side, yeah? Let's draw, let's just draw it. You would want to have them even, first of all. And the second principle here is that when you're doing the building, you don't want to mess down here. If you're messing too much down here, the whole vibration will be going like this and like this, and you would not have the stability anymore. I hope this makes sense. So that's why I would start scraping from here, from here, from here, and going down, down, down. This here, I wanted to give you an example of the idea of the reed being one gradual line going down. Only the tip is thinner, and then the way from the tip to going to the heart should be very smooth. It should be like a bottle of wine and not like this, not having a step. Some people prefer to have a step or a little bit of a step, but I think 
this way you have more flexibility when you play. Let's get to the actual scraping. Now the reed was soaking for a little bit. You don't have to soak it for very long. Just so that it gets a little bit softer, it's easier to get the bark off. That's what we're gonna start with. I'm get getting the mandrel. Also, please make sure that you, you have make yourself comfortable. Your workspace and your posture is also good. Don't underestimate that. I take the bark off. From both sides. This knife is very, very good for that kind of thing. I'm not taking too much. Just before I cut it, I find that better. Just a little bit more. So that it's clean and even. There's a little bit here at the end. I would like to remove that. So the manjo gives me a very good stability like this. Otherwise, if I don't have it, look, it's it's just not stable. You, you have nothing to grab uh, stably. Like you, you just it's not comfortable. I think that that's pretty obvious. So I, I get the cutter. It's already set at seventy one point two something like that. It's a good length for me. Okay. Now. It's a good opening. It's a little bit closed. A little bit on the closed side. Doesn't matter. It's fine. It's pretty tight. And then I start. <laughs> the first thing I do is I like to first make the scrape. You can do that in the beginning by measuring, if that's, uh, I think that's helpful, I don't need to do that anymore. But I will show you how to do it. So you can make a little line. I think it's going to be here where I would, would like it to start. Here, and, and just to make sure, you can... And it's 10.5, 10 and a half. Perfect. That's what I, I like to start. And now I'm doing kind of the U. Make sure you stick to the line. In the beginning I used to pencil it. And then I just go with the pencil like this. If you are a beginner, you can do that. I might as well just show it. And then carefully, without digging, digging in, just taking the surface, which is the hardest part. In this case, it's actually quite nice and uh, not too hard. Which shows me that this piece of can is a little bit more flexible, something that I actually like. Hope you can see how it's coming along. Sometimes what is helpful is to look the, from the read this way, uh, like it shows me more of the detail and where it still needs to be more even. I think down here and again very carefully because we don't want to have too much of a difference between here and here. Don't dig deep. Just so that we have the scrape and we know what we where we are going to be scraping later
Now I do the exact same thing on the other side. Make sure that it's the same. If you need to, like really, what I like to do sometimes is like this, and I just turn it. I just make the little line like this. Compare, yeah, that's good. And again, repeating the same process. Be patient, take your time. It's better to be slower than to take too much and then make a mistake. I'm going to be also just doing it a bit slower just for the demonstration. Make sure you have also good lighting. Okay. This looks fine. So now I'm going to start the tip. I think that doing the tip, especially by the end when we're finishing, it's it's better if the reed is more dry. It's it's dry. Then it's actually easier to scrape it. I'm going to start again with this knife. And in the beginning, it's okay to take bigger chunks like this. And then I do the corners. I do it like this. And then later I will refine them, make them more circle. But in the beginning, it's okay. And make sure you don't take the whole thing off. Like you really need to be careful with how much the knife goes in and how much you're taking off. Like this is fine. What you can do also here is also use the pencil if you want to, to just draw. Draw the kind of tip that you want to have. And then, then just scrape it. That, that's what I did in the very beginning. You see, I'm taking bigger chunks, but I'm still making sure that it's a calculated move. Something like that. So now we have kind of the rough idea. And now we just make it thinner. And from time to time, you also take from the sides a little bit from the middle and more from the sides so that we even the differences. If we are doing only the tip right now, we would create too much of a difference and it will be more difficult to avoid the step between the tip and going down. So working more on the tip and from time to time you scrape down. I will start doing it a little bit faster. Make sure you do in like the similar amounts of strokes. Like if I do here, then I just do it the exactly same numbers, the si exactly same pressure on the other side. You develop a little bit of a, you will develop the feeling of, um, of how much you push, how much you're taking out and so that you make sure everything is even. We need to concentrate on the tip more. 
Now I'm getting a little bit bigger chunks again. Okay, we are getting a little bit closer. Now I would measure. This side is a little bit thinner. You can concentrate on one side. Let's measure. I'm going to use this one. And there is a little line here. 15 in the middle. And like 13. This is this means that it's all almost almost there. Let's see the other corner. Twelve, no thirteen. Perfect. Well this side is more is almost done <clears throat> and then I'm gonna work on this side. Okay, we're starting to get there. This side still has a bit more here to be refined. And I'm going to use the, the Japanese knife. I like it for the finishing touches or for the end. It's already, sorry, I forgot to show you. It's already vibrating. I think I'm a bit lucky with this piece of cane that is it's a little bit more on the flexible si side, which shows me that it might be ready quicker. Making sure, making all this even. This side is looking more ready and we're just gonna measure in a bit how we are with the different points on the micrometer. You can, of course, always try it and this will show you. Uh, this is already a very rich vibe, like the vibrations are very rich, which is something that I like. I like to release a lot of vibrations in the beginning. So what I'm going to measure is the tip again. And then I'm going to measure the middle point and down at the back. Thirteen in the middle. This is eleven. And this side is ten. That's very good. I'm even a little bit scared that with this read, maybe. I hope I didn't go overboard. Okay, on this side we are at fourteen ish in the middle and then that's 12 and the other corner is 11. That's good. Make sure you make you you make everything even. You can also see it. Like you, you can also see where it might be a bit thicker. Yes, this side needs a little bit more refinement. Although what I would do is I would probably just give it a try in a bit. So see where we are. Like this. Let's measure the, the middle point. A very important point for the whole balance of the reed. I have a line here on this micrometer. That's exactly the middle. So it shows 50, which is great. So that, that's exactly the principle I was trying to explain. 
is that you start by finishing first the tip and then you still have more extra going down and that's very good now to have a bit thicker middle part because then we can always take it but now the balance is correct and I feel with this read that it's already it's already vibrating pretty good so I don't think it will be necessary if the cane is harder then you can take more from the middle and going down Let's see actually how the heart is. The heart is at 42. And this is the second line of the micrometer. And that's something that you can establish for yourself as well. Depending on your micrometer, you have the different lines and different points that you want to to always have a point of reference. Okay, this is how we're looking. We're looking pretty good. Opening is fine. The way it's closing is something that I like. I had another read here I wanted to show you as an example of how I think that the sides are with this one. This is a very clear example of how the corners are closing too fast. So this read actually is, is not, and I know because I've tried it, doesn't vibrate very well. It doesn't start so well because of that. Something that I was telling you in the theoretical part of things. I don't have the, the other example because the other example would be like with the thick, like this is also a very good example. A good structure, good ratio sides to, mid, to, to middle. And that's the thing, like I, I have always a consistent gauge but with this read, I don't know why this is the case. So this is the one we have that we are working on. What's also very useful is to compare with the working read and see um, also playing and also just visually. And if you have a very good working read, I, was, I would also recommend measure it, see where it is. And also when you are finishing a new read, don't rush to get to those same measurements too quickly because uh, like I said the process of getting to that point is important if you make it very very fast or make it slow it does matter because we're working with cane uh, and we have to be careful about that it's the same with using machines machines that take too much too fast from the back I think never really work for me especially So what I'm going to do now is going to take out my oboe, give it a try, see where we at, and then see if we want to uh, scrape a little bit more. Or yeah, it's always good to to try. Like it's just not possible for me in this video to do all the things, but you can you can always just give it a try um, and and see where you are. And. Sorry, I'm not going to change the angle from the for the camera in case we need to do some corrections, but I'm just going to give it a try. I hope it's not going to be too loud. Okay. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that. It's, to be honest, a bit on the light side. Uh, the piece itself is quite flexible. And that's why it starts to, to vibrate very quickly. And I don't really have to do that much work on it. 
Uh, what I feel is that I would leave it until tomorrow and play a little bit more on it because I don't think that right now it needs more scraping, although it, there is still a bit extra material down here and that's what I was meaning like it this one is already works if it was like a harder cane for example I think I would have had to take a little bit more here but at this point actually I would not do more work on this one today and then tomorrow I would uh, I would compare it to another read that I use that I like and see what's the difference and see also where maybe it would be scraped. What, what I think is that I would probably release a little bit more of longer vibrations. Let me just put my elbow down. What do I mean by that? If you see the read. Uh, I would scrape down here. Like down here a little bit because I can see the extra material here and that here it doesn't even look that great. Uh, I guess I'm lucky with that piece of cane. Yes. The next day. And there we have it today. This read is actually a little bit better. I think I will do my routine, my warm up routine and see if I need to correct something. But I think it was a little bit lucky with this one because the piece of cane is a little bit more on the flexible. I'm not going to say like soft because it's not really that soft, but it, uh, it turned out fine. And I'm pretty happy with this. It functions. I think it would be good for practicing. What I like is that it, it just responds well. It, it vibrates. It, it works. So if I'm going to use it for something more important, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, at least it's, it functions and there's no, no issues with that. So yeah. And I think I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know how it goes. Try it out. And again, I'm not saying this is like the only way to make the reads. I just wanted to show you the way that I learned and the way that I find works very good for me personally. I might do also a follow-up if there is enough interest in the future. Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a cheeky like as it helps my channel grow. And with that all said and done, we'll meet again soon.